The imperfections lie in both people. We have to have enough bandwidth and relational capacity, man, to be able to hold the tension of being able to watch somebody develop with us on their way to somewhere. Mm. Vice versa, it has to happen on both sides. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because marriage, is, it's, it's just like this mirror, man. It's just this little mirror, it just shows you, you're like, oh. 100%. That's me, oh, okay. <laughs> 100%, absolutely, yeah. I agree. Of our marriage, I remember we were having an argument, a disagreement, and uh, she just looked at me and she said to me, I had, I told her if you wouldn't have done this, this, that, the other, and she looked at me. She's like, I'm not really your problem. She's like, your anger is. Mm. And it was in that moment, uh, even though I wanted to deny every part of it because I thought that she was um, basically um, just not listening to what I had to say. And she was using this deflection of saying, well, I'm not your problem, you are. Blah, blah, blah. It was like, no, you didn't hear what I said or whatever. The truth of the matter is, is that she was right. And it was in that moment. I wish that single people, Sean, would go and talk to people like you, like myself. I, I think I wish that single people would pause and say, wait a minute, let me find what I'm looking for in somebody else who's displaying it. It's so interesting that single people will talk to other single people who have the same thoughts, ideals, limiting beliefs, limitations, right? Uh, that they have to attempt to enter into a relationship and both of them share the same fears and or uh, unwillingness to embrace, right? These imperfections in other people. So you're talking to the wrong person. What's up, Brave Hearts community? This is Sean Heineman, your premier pre-engagement coach, back with another segment of A Scary Terry Mary, wanting you to love fearlessly. I have a special guest with me today. This man has had a huge impact on my life, um, from pastoring to friend to just his wisdom. Uh, he's been made, I believe, over 25 years? 31 31 years, uh, dad, granddad, the man has wisdom out of this world, has a crazy following on TikTok. If you haven't seen this content, I suggest you go check it out. I have everything linked up in the description below. Brave Hearts community, let's show some love to Demetrius Colbert. How are you doing, sir? Man, I'm doing well. Thank you so much for uh, having me here. The very gracious introduction. Uh, and you also, man, just watching you and seeing what you're doing now has been incredible blessing to me, man. So I'm glad just to be here and have an opportunity to chop it up with you. For sure, man. Yeah, everyone, make sure you go check out his TikToks. I I wanted to talk about all his TikToks, but <laughs> that, <laughs> that that you just had to go check out the content today. I want to discuss embracing imperfections. Love and authenticity. I want to talk about this because we do not talk about this enough. Um, and we're going to get into this. Uh, why is it difficult to accept others' imperfections when we are flawed ourselves? Great question. And um, I wish there was just an easy answer to that. <laughs> but I do think that is multi-layered, Sean, to be honest with you, because I think that what happens is, is that people... Um, have an idea in their mind about who they want. And ultimately that ideal a lot of times is born out of who they are not. And so we have a struggle with embracing other people's imperfections because when, when we have this ideal and we bring it in, then it ultimately covers up what we're missing, what we haven't worked on, what we haven't personally developed internally in ourselves. So we think if we have this other person, they, they really can kind of, we, we can kind of hide behind their shade tree, if you will, right? And uh, just continue to go on. And and I and also think too that um, we also put our identity oftentimes in the people that we are connected to and that we're in a relationship with when we shouldn't put our identity in that place. And I think that that causes us to have uh, a lot of problems because people come flawed. And that's the beautiful thing about being able to work through a relationship mm -hmm. is that 
those those flaws oftentimes are beautiful things that both of those people can work on and develop and grow and close the gap on uh, a lot of times. But we we want somebody who we think has everything already, but it's typically about a shortcoming that's really uh, hidden on the inside of us. Are you a content creator, YouTuber? Maybe you've interviewed someone on your video podcast and they said something that was really, really good. Or maybe you said something that was really, really good. Well, enter Opus Clips. This is the platform that I use when I want to share 30 to 60 second video clips that I can share with the whole world. I mean, you can share those clips on TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, uh, Instagram Reels, like these 30 to 60 second clips that Opus Clips can give to you with the click of a mouse. All you have to do is upload the recording and boom, Opus Clips within maybe 10 minutes will give you 15 to 25 different clips with description on the side of the video. And it also gives you like a title and it gives you a rating and let you know how powerful that clip can be used on social media from a rating of 99 all the way down to maybe 60. This is a phenomenal platform that has took my social media marketing to another level. If you want to level up your social media game, go in the description below right now and get the link for Opus Clips. This will not disappoint you. Ooh, you coming out the gate swinging. <laughs> <laughs> because in no shade y'all know i love y'all brave hearts community y'all know i love y'all or any anyone who's watching this for the first time i love y'all but i must say because when i talk to my single folks the first thing they say is i want a man or a woman of god and i'm like is that for th for them to be you know your spiritual uh, 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 Bible for, you know what I'm saying? Opposed to you knowing like, do you know the word for yourself? You know what I'm saying? It's like, I, are, are you a woman of God? Are you a man of God? Because you say you want those things. Right. You know, right. Right. You know, what does that mean too, Sean, to be honest with you? What does that mean? So when someone is saying, I want a man or a woman of God, what are you describing? So again, where we're saying, I want somebody who doesn't share the same struggle that I do, when in fact, you know, you're 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 attempting to say, I'm good where I am. I want somebody who doesn't have a struggle so that I don't have to also help man, na you know, navigate that scenario and situation right there. So when we say we want a man or woman of God, what are we saying? What are we describing? Are we talking about values? Are we talking about somebody who appears to be spiritual? Are we talking about somebody who prays all the time? Are we talking about somebody who's in a role in ministry? What are we asking for? Because if you're telling me you want a man or a woman of God, you're saying, I want to build something with somebody that we can have legacy attached to it and we can go somewhere. When people see what not just us, but what we built, that's the that's the after work of what we've done together. They will see that. And so we we then become the truth and a shade tree to other people while they work on what they're working on. So if we don't have that in mind, I'm wondering what people are asking about when they're saying, I want a man or a woman of God. We have to cultivate what we have. It doesn't just happen for us. It has to be cultivated. Mm -hmm. And that's such a great question. To all those who are watching, Leave in the in the comments below. Yeah. When you say you want a man or a woman or guy, break that down for me. Let me know because I would love to hear that. Cause that's one of the 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 first things I hear from most of my single people. So yeah, so in the, in the comments below, I would love to hear how would you define uh, a man or woman or guy? Great, great point. Cause so many people say that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How how do you embrace imperfections in marriage? What does that look like? I mean, you've been married over 30 years. Like 31 years, yeah. 31 years. How do you embrace imperfections in your marriage? I'll say this to you. Acceptance of one another's flaws reads a deeper connection with us. I have to know 
that there's going to be some times where I'm going to be the strength in the relationship. And sometimes she's going to be the strength in the relationship. And that all depends on what's going on with us individually. Uh, and then collectively, we will have to say, I'm not where I need to be. And I'm going to need to lean in on you right now. Or sometimes it will be vice versa. She will need to lean in on me. So again, I didn't, I didn't marry a, a project. I married a person. And so I understand that that person comes with their own set of limitations and challenges, good days and bad days. And so it's all about choosing that person, Sean, every day. This is my biggest challenge that I find with people is that you've got to choose the person that you're with every day. There are a lot of people, ah, I want to get married. I want to be this. I want to be that. Let, let, let me back up for a second. I get asked this question a lot, man, how, what is the secret to marriage? And, and there isn't a secret. Um, there's two things that I do believe are necessary though, outside of a relationship with God. And it's going to be this one, I have to ask my wife, how can I serve you every day? And I do everything in my power to do that. Both people need to figure out how do I serve you today? Like, what can I do for you that's going to make your day better? That is automatically acknowledging that there's flaws there, right? What mm -hmm. can I do? Maybe my wife isn't as strong in the area. Maybe I'm not as strong as in an area. So we do things, we attempt to do things for each other, with each other, around each other that allow us, Sean, to be able to close the gap on those flaws with each other. The second thing is, is choosing I, I'm choosing you. And when I chose you, I chose everything that came with you. So I'm not now attempting to fix those things in you so that I'm comfortable. I'm recognizing that these are a part of who you are. And I love that too, even if I don't share that same struggle, because what I love about you doesn't, it's not, it's not encapsulated in this area where you have an imperfection. This, if I if I only love the parts of you that I think are perfect, then I'm not loving all of you in the first place. Mm. You, you, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, I can't pick and choose the parts of you. Well, I'm gonna love this part of you. No, when I said I wanted you, that meant I wanted all of you. So she has to in turn want all of me too. That includes flaws, imperfections, difficulties, socks on the floor, whatever the scenario might be, right? <laughs> um, you, you have to say, I'm choosing the whole person, their whole life, not the parts of it that I like. Mm, yeah, because we, we live in a convenient society, right? We just want everything done just the way we like, right? You know, we like the, it's like, I married you, you know, why owe you, but people only want to marry the why oh, they leave the you out. You know? And they leave the you out. That's that's exactly right. Why yo, but you, I'm good with yo, but not with you. And I think, yeah, man, uh, uh convenience when we talk about that again. One of the things that is important and necessary, Sean, for relationships is the ability to fight for what you believe you have. And when people don't take the time to fight for what they believe that they have, they're basically saying, this isn't enough for me to invest in. You know, all investments come with some level of risk. The question becomes, is which risk are you willing to take? And here's the deal. You can move to the next person if you want to, believing that it's going to be better. But they also have inherent risk. And you also have to be vulnerable and you also have to invest yourself into that relationship as well. It's just the way that it is. The ideal of escaping this causes people to make choices and decisions that just aren't healthy. They're just not healthy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're not. And there's no such thing as convenience in a relationship. We work together. We struggle together. We battle together and we don't, we fight against what comes against us and not each other. So convenience, uh, no, if there's going to be a convenience, we both are going to benefit from that convenience because of the work and effort that we put in to create that convenience. Mm -hmm. I love That's that. Yeah, because 
when when one person is winning in a marriage, ultimately both of you are you're losing. The marriage is losing. You know, so a lot of times people think like I gotta be right or I have to this kind of thing. It's like we 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 this one flesh thing, you know, we we gotta win. Opposed yeah, to you always having we, an upper hand. We <laughs> we have to win. That's the way that it has to go down, man, for sure. Hundred percent. Yeah. Why aren't we talking about embracing imperfections to to single people enough? I mean, this is a topic. I think this will keep people from getting married, not in a bad way, but to really give them something to think about. Because I think this topic, even though it, it's 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 kind of nuanced in a way, but how why aren't we talking to singles about this enough? I I actually wish a couple of things that singles would do. Mm -hmm. I really do. I wish this wholeheartedly. I wish that single people, Sean would go and talk to people like you, like myself. Mm -hmm. I, I think I wish that single people would pause and say, wait a minute, let me find what I'm looking for in somebody else who's displaying it. It's so interesting that single people will talk to other single people who have the same thoughts, ideals, limiting beliefs, limitations, right, uh, that they have to attempt to enter into a relationship and both of them share the same fears and or uh, unwillingness to embrace, right? These imperfections in other people. So you're talking to the wrong person. But if you go and talk to somebody like myself, mm -hmm. I have three plus decades into a relationship, right? So that means either I endured something or I know something. Mm -hmm. one, of, one of the two things. Either I, I've endured this person or I've actually know something that allowed us to be successful in this relationship. And so why would you not run to that? So one of the big challenges that I find, man, with a lot of people um, not willing to embrace uh, uh, imperfections, too, is because now we have all these red pills, blue pills. We have all of these numbering systems. You're a 10, you're a five. You know, he's a one. You're really this. Um, and then you get to see a lot of this stuff is inundated uh, on uh, social media where we're listening to people who, you know, are, you know, hey, I'm a, you know, I'm in the top 2%, I'm a 1%, you know, all this other kind of good stuff. So we have all these numbers flying around when really truthfully, Sean, none of this stuff has anything to do with identity. So what we're doing is we're actually looking for a person, Sean, that does not exist. This person does not exist. So the reason why we won't put up for an imperfection is because we're marrying or willing to embrace falsehoods just because it looks like something that we want. When truthfully behind the veil, when the veil is removed, you will ultimately see. If you get close enough to my face, you will see the imperfections in my face. The closer you get, and the same thing will happen for them, the closer they get to a relationship, they will then, in fact, see imperfections in that relationship. Well, oh, well, when I met you, you were like this. But now it's been a little while. Now I'm seeing something else come from you. So what we're, we're, we're not trying to get to know a person in order to deep dive into the relationship and see what their imperfections are. We're not even willing to have conversations at that level. Hey, where do you struggle? Like, what, it, what's, what are you working on in your life? That's one of the questions I think people who are dating should ask. Hey, what kind of things are you working on in your life right now? What is what, what is the thing that you've overcome most recently, mm. right? You're going to open the door, Sean, to a plethora of information. Of how are you raised, right? What were the things you most valued or were most valued in your home while you were being raised? This is going to tell you a lot about this person and their imperfections, their tendencies, their proclivities, right? Their preferences, all of these things, you're gonna get uh, you're gonna get access to all of those things, Sean. But we we don't learn how to talk now. What we've done is we have a list of this is who you are. I need you to make $120,000. <laughs> you need to be driving this kind of car, you need to have 401k like this. No one wants to build anything with anybody anymore. We want somebody to come ready made. So watch this. We will settle, we will settle for the look without the love. 
you look like something. So when we're out, people, mm -hmm. they, they, that's a power couple. And, and there is no power in that couple because you don't even know this person down at the heart level. You don't know what they dream about. You don't know what they desire. You don't know what they want. You don't know what they hustle for. You don't know any of those things because we're not having conversations about who the person is. We're having conversations around what we need the person to appear to have so that we look like somehow we've ascended somewhere. We're balling now. We're doing something fantastic. We're doing something great. That's why I think a lot of imperfections aren't there. And again, it's easy for me to hide behind saying that you don't have something that I'm not working on in my own life. Mm. Ah, so then, so you said people, people are looking for someone that doesn't exist. They don't exist. That's heavy. I, you know, I was thinking about. <laughs> <laughs> they don't exist. I was thinking of. Did you see the Usual Suspects with Kevin Spacey? Oh man, a long time ago. Long time ago, right? Yeah. But when you say look for somebody that doesn't exist, I'm thinking of Kaiser Soze, the guy who they they told a story about him, but the guy never existed. Just existed, yes, yes, yes. You know, absolutely. So, they, oh, that's people, good. They don't exist, Sean. And again, we will buy the books that they put in the bookstore. Do not tell you about the time they wanted to quit. And in the middle, when they didn't think it was going to work, they ultimately sell you on the end. Mm -hmm. But the best books are the ones where people tell you when they started and when they almost quit. But you don't see those books in the bookstore. And if you don't have those conversations, you're trying to create something that isn't real. Mm -hmm. The truth of the matter is, sell me the end of the story. But if you didn't give me the beginning in the middle of the story, I'm missing the most crucial points because how did you get to the end and sustain what you're doing? Mm -hmm. A person doesn't exist. A perfect person doesn't exist. Yeah. No. Oh my God. Yeah. Cause we, we, we're all beautifully broken. Right. You know, and when uh, you think about, uh, just from a, a, a biblical perspective, right? You know, the, the Bible talks about how while we were sinners, Christ died for us, right? It's like this, this love, you know? And I was just thinking how many people are even willing to, to, to stand the test of time. And like you said, they're looking for someone that doesn't exist and you can spend these X amount of years with somebody and you like, oh, this ain't the person who I thought you were going to be. I'm out, you know? <laughs> yeah, who I thought you were going to be while never looking at, again, yourself and saying, well, who who am I? Who do I want to be in this relationship? Which, again, is, is a big problem because the imperfections lie in both people. We have to have enough bandwidth and relational capacity, man, to be able to hold the tension of being able to watch somebody develop with us on their way to somewhere. Mm -hmm. Vice versa, it has to happen on both sides. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because marriage is it's it's just like this mirror, man. It's just this little mirror. It just shows you. You like, oh, hundred percent. That's me. Oh, okay. Hundred <laughs> percent. Absolutely. Yeah. I agree. Some stuff I need to work on. Uh, how do you differentiate between healthy imperfections and issues that require addressing? Man, that's a great question. If somebody is uh, abusive, Sean in any way, shape, or form, uh, emotionally, mentally, uh, spiritually, financially, mm -hmm. withholding money from you, um, spiritually abusing you, telling you uh, that you don't have a right to do certain things because they know it. Um, there's uh, abuse, and that even goes beyond an imperfection. Um, and then there's the imperfection of, hey, this person is late all the time. Hey, um, this person isn't uh, as consistent as they need to be uh, all the time. Uh, hey, you know, I, I literally have to remind this person of various different dates and times or things along those lines. All those are fixable. All those are are, are manageable and things are recovered. The, the difference, though, is when you're dealing with somebody who is uh, a person who will uh, ultimately... Um, you know, harm you in some way, shape, or form, and isn't looking out for your ultimate good, that's somebody that you need to uh, know the difference between 
what's healthy and, and what isn't healthy. And that doesn't mean to, so let me clarify something here too, because uh, this is an easy thing to kind of go off on a tangent about, and that would be people would be like, the, one of the big words right now is that people are narcissists. <laughs> and um, I'm so tired of hearing that word because to be honest with you, if you really look up narcissism mm -hmm. um, and you pay very close attention to it, all of us have a little bit of narcissist in us. So we're all, we're all on the spectrum somewhere. We have a little bit of narcissist in us. And so what we've done, though, is we've used it as an escape route for no longer wanting to invest into a relationship that we don't have the personal, again, bandwidth or capacity, Sean, to be able to manage a person because we probably have met our own limitation. And so th there's just because someone has a, a, a deeper struggle perhaps than yours does not make them a full-blown narcissist. They may have some narcissistic tendencies, but truthfully, again, we all are on the spectrum of narcissism. Just look it up. All of us have a little bit of narcissism uh, that runs through us on a regular basis. And uh, that doesn't make us a narcissist. The moment could be a narcissist moment, but that doesn't make us a narcissist. But to be healthy, um, healthy people have conversations. Healthy people seek to um, recover from their difficulties uh, mm -hmm. with each other. Healthy people uh, communicate very well. They're honest. Um, they're sincere. And what they do, they take ownership when they do fail. Um, and it's not an incessant, hey, I'm sorry this week. Hey, I'm sorry <laughs> next week. Hey, I'm sorry. It's not over and over again, right? It's like, hey, you know what? Hey, I missed it on that. We got upset. It was this side or the other. You know, I said some things that I didn't want to say. And this isn't calling you out of your name, belittling you, mm -hmm. you know, stripping you of your dignity as a person, things along those lines. This is, hey, you know, it crossed boundaries that we never have crossed or wouldn't want to cross in terms of how we feel in this moment. Those are healthy relationships. And I believe that all relationships have some level of tension in them. Uh, you don't know what you have. And until you have to walk through those levels of tension with somebody else, those are just, that's just the reality. It's just a fact. Um, they're not going to be free of that. Um, but somebody who's late all the time or whatever, whatnot, Hey, that's something easily correctable, um, that you can share with them and, you know, push them through. And I don't even think something like that, Sean, should be a deal breaker with somebody, Yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. but I know people who do fall out about that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because they're like, I'm on time all the time and he can't get it together or she can't get it together. And I'm uh, I'm so tired of you. <laughs> yeah, it happens all the time. Yeah. I yeah. mean, some of my clients, mm -hmm. those are some of the clients that I have that I coach that will tell me this is my issue with them. We could work on those issues, but it's not a deal breaker. Yeah. Yeah. I Shouldn't agree. be a deal breaker. Yeah, I agree. You, when you talked about narcissists, I, I'm so glad that you said that because anytime I hear someone say the reason they broke up with their boyfriend or their girlfriend was because they're a narcissist. <laughs> and they leave it at that. He's a narcissist. I'm like, okay, what about you, though? Yeah. And that's the missing piece of it, Sean, is that these people, a lot of times don't realize that even that statement a lot of times can come across narcissistically. And, you know, again, it's the ideal, nothing's wrong with me, something's wrong with him or her. And so I had to walk away from this person because they're a narcissist. It's one of those things, you know, it becomes a, becomes a hashtag, a keyword in relationships. And then everybody starts to run to it. But again, Sean, what is our personal capacity to embrace another person into our lives and walk with another person flawed, imperfect and all, and say, this is a person I care about. And while there's nothing abusive here, there's some things that we both have to work on. These are my strengths. These are his strengths. These are my weaknesses. These are his weaknesses. You know what? We'll go find somebody too if we both can't match in these weakness place and we'll find somebody. We'll get friends around us. We'll, we'll put people around us who can help us, who can uh, allow us to build in this space, you know, in this place and be able to go forward in that. So, but but for the most part, uh, yeah, man, it's an overused 
it's an overused word, again, for me, in my opinion, to escape uh, the responsibility of working on a relationship. Mm. Yeah, because you got to put in the work and you've been married over 30 years. You know what it's like to 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 put in the work over and over again consistently. Um, so I'm and I'm glad that you that, and that's one of the reasons I had you on the show because I'm like over 30 years, like you said, you you know a thing or two. So with this bit. amount of wisdom, yeah, I had to have you on because there's so many single people that I'm connected to, especially who want to marry or even remarry. I think an episode like this is crucial. That's uh, really needed for today's culture and, and, and our clients alike. Yeah. Question, how do you embrace your own perfections? Or when did you even know? When were you aware? You was like, you know, I need to fix some stuff. I tell you what, man, um, you just gave the mirror analogy to being <laughs> married, man. Uh, my wife told me, several years ago, I'll never forget, early on in our marriage, it was definitely within side the first seven years, first decade of, of our marriage. I remember we were having an argument, a disagreement, and uh, she just looked at me and she said to me, I had, I told her, if you wouldn't have done this, this, that, the other, and she looked at me, she's like, I'm not really your problem. She's like, your anger is. Mm. And it was in that moment, uh, even though I wanted to deny every part of it because I thought that she was um, basically um, just not listening to what I had to say. And she was using this deflection of saying, well, I'm not your problem. You are. Blah, blah, blah. It was like, no, you didn't hear what I said or whatever. The truth of the matter is, is that she was right. And it was in that moment that I did know, like, hey, dude, this this is you. This is a thing with you and you do have to address these issues. But what I've also done too, Sean, you didn't ask this, but I want to, I want to share it. And sure. I've taken the opportunity to over the years, pay attention to also how I was raised. I'm a big fan of people knowing their stock, knowing where they came from um, because the majority of the things that we practice and that we know and that we struggle with and that we do well with came from the people who raised us. And if it wasn't directly from those people, it was from the people in the community that we were raised in because culture is people, it's not processes or things. And so you pick up a lot of cultural things depending on how you were raised and where you were raised from. And when I also didn't have certain things um, in my life, I would respond um, angrily. So I had to find a lot of that out, which then led to some therapy type sessions and different things along those lines. When my mom passed away three years ago, it was 27th of last month was her uh, death anniversary. Mm -hmm. uh, so I had gone to um, uh, grief counseling in the first year, uh, really not too long after she had passed away. And there was a lot of conversation that I had in there uh, about how I felt and about how some of those uh, anger things that were just kind of laying down in there, mm -hmm. but they would, they would show up at inopportune times. Because my wife would also say to me, hey, um, your response to me doesn't match what I was just talking to you about. But for me, the response that I came up with was one of anger, disappointment. And discourage, and it didn't match the scenario, it didn't match the situation. So um, I work on that as often as I possibly can. Uh, still, I don't ever want to believe that I licked it. Um, and the reason for that is because uh, we, I, I, on this side of heaven, um, the whole my hands look new and my feet did too. I don't. That's uh, no. I don't. I don't see that. I see that uh, Paul tells us in Romans uh, chapter number seven that I see in me uh, that when, when I want to do good, that evil is always present with me, right? He's, Paul gives us a picture of a glimpse of the fact that there's imperfection in the perfection that we're pursuing and the imperfection still lives there and it constantly battles with us, right? He even asked, he says, who shall deliver me? I love it. He said, this body of death. And so 
we've oftentimes kind of even misled our brothers and sisters um, in Christ because we told them, you know, you're you're a, you're a new creation. Your spirit man is new, mm -hmm. but you still got You still are you. You still got to take a shower. You still got to put on some deodorant, right? You still got to wash your behind. Here's 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 the reality. Um, I'm not new, and and Romans chapter number twelve tells tells us that the renewing happens here and not here, right? So the renewing happens here. And so renewal is how I think about situations. And so if I want to create capacity for even other people's imperfections, it's going to come from renewal in my thinking processes that God has commanded me to do in order to live with somebody else and with myself to acknowledge that seeing my own faults and knowing the grace of God that covers that is going to allow for me to then allow for somebody else to be in my space with me. And I'll have the bandwidth and the capacity to hold that. Mm. Ah, that's so good. So good. Thank you for the transparent moment because I, I feel you because I, I even realized, uh, cause my wife and I, we have three therapists. We got our own individual and then we have our marriage therapist. I love it. So, so we be, we be, we be getting our therapy on. I love it, man. I <laughs> wish know? more people would. I wish more people would. Man. And, and even being married this second time around, I still have things that I struggle with, you know? And I'm just like, man, this is an ongoing process. You know, even you talk about anger. I didn't even realize that I had anger issues, you know? And, and my wife was telling me, I remember one day we were talking and she was just like, this is like you say, this is, this is, you had this before we were together. You know what I'm saying? This is this is a personal issue that you have to resolve. I'm here to support you, but at the same time, that's that's not me. You know what I'm saying? And when you come to the realization of that, you're like, oh, dang, I, I got to work on that? I got mommy issues? Yep, man. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So uh, the beautiful thing is when you're married to someone who will hold your hand and walk with you. Right. That's right. It. And you, you, you're not going to judge me. You see that I'm in process, but I'm not using being in process uh, as an excuse for not also progressing enough to where I don't get to lean on using terminology that says I'm in process. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Do, 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 do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. My process should lead me to a point where it gets less and less that I have to use that terminology. Mm. I should be progressing enough. It's like your children, right? You're like, hey, <laughs> this is how you go potty. Mm -hmm. We got to transition you from pull-ups to getting on that potty. You, you're you okay with the process, mm -hmm. but you want to see an ultimate outcome where there's an individual accountability responsibility for what they need to do. So same thing happens in our relationship. You might catch me in process, but I can't be in process over the same issue for decades. At some point, I got to move. And then what, what I can be in process with is a new thing that was probably hidden behind that thing because most of those things are connected anyway. If I'm dealing with something over here, it's because I probably had something else over here that was hiding that. And so now this thing has come forward. So I will always be developing myself. But the same thing over and over again, no, there's got to be a point and part of me where I mature in that place. And I don't appeal to process all the time to explain away my actions or my behavior. Ooh, layers. There's so many layers to this thing. As, as, there is. as, uh, uh, as Donkey would, uh, or what, what Shrek would say to Donkey, layers, Donkey, layers. <laughs> layers, yeah. <laughs> it's true, man. It's yeah. So yeah, it's this, so can you let? Well, first of all, let me. I want to acknowledge you for just staying the course, for staying married for like thirty-one it. years, man. That in today's culture, that's that's unheard of. Uh, so I just want to acknowledge you for that, and, and I know Connie as well. So you know, it's just like I know y'all. So I, I, I'm not just talking just from behind the camera. You know, no, I appreciate it for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And, yeah, and and I also just want to acknowledge you for everything that you've done for uh, the people of faith. You know, from 
church to to ministry to therapy to counseling just how many people or lives you have impacted so uh you've impacted my life as well so um i just want to acknowledge you for those things and i appreciate it yes for sure let everyone know how they can get in touch with you i'm going to make sure i have everything linked up in the description below yeah absolutely there's a couple of different ways uh you can catch me at demetriuscobert.com that's my actual coaching website um you can catch me there um, you can also go to the ministry website that I have. That's the dig. That's with two G's, the D I G G dot org. You can catch me there. And then on the, both of those pages, you can find my other social media sites. You may mention of my TikTok, which um, I just recently hopped back on after 30 days. Sometimes I got to get out of breather. So I just hopped back on just uh, last Friday. I believe it was after 30 days away. Um, but you can catch me uh, there. It's the Deeper Podcast there with Demetrius Colbert. You can catch me there. Um, and yeah, I'd, I'd love to connect with uh, with anybody. Mm -hmm. For sure. And then have you read uh, The Gifts of Imperfection by Brene Brown? Man, Brene Brown is my girl. <laughs> yes. Brene Brown is my girl. I love Brene, she has so much good stuff to offer. I read a lot of books on psychology mm -hmm. and um, and therapy. Mm -hmm. uh, it's important, but yes, I have. Yes, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I'll, I'll have that linked up in the description too for someone who might want to read that book as well. Well, Bravehearts community, you heard it here. Make sure you go connect with Demetrius. So much great content, so much wisdom you do not want to miss out. So if you are watching this via YouTube, make sure you hit the subscribe button and share this with someone. Share this in your group chat. Get this video, put it in your group chat with your girlfriends or with your homies. And that way, you know, of course, we get more views, but we're able to help people as well. If you are listening to this video podcast, make sure you leave a rating and review. We'd love to hear from you. By doing so, I'll put you on a drawing for a free Amazon gift card. Who doesn't like free things?